So today we want to talk about the issue of Gachagua's legacy, less more to do with the issue of uh, his being back as deputy president because he served the two years he served and uh, the impeachment has taken place. The impeachment took place by parliament and then the removal from office took place by the Senate. So the court can only evaluate the process. That's why Gachagua went to court severally and the court continuously told him they cannot interfere with the process which has begun. The process which began was the process of removing him from office, which was finished on Thursday, and was degazetted as the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. The courts can evaluate that process and then recommend that it was done wrongfully, or it was done uh, poorly, or they didn't follow the law or the process, but the court has no powers to reinstate him. There is nowhere in law uh, where the court has got a mandate to reinstate him. That's why they're saying stay in orders just in case the court declares that he was wrongfully removed. Maybe parliament can redo the process, Senate can redo the process, or the person who wanted to remove him from office can reconsider the opinion. But for now, Rigadi Gachagua has ceased to become the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, and that is the truth. And that's why you say he has no security, he has uh, nothing else to hold on to, in fact, uh, even if he says that uh, they should be reinstated, no, they should not be reinstated. He is not the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, according to what it is. Maybe he reached there wrongfully, but all of us have gone through it. Um, I was a professor in Strathmore also. Uh, Strathmore wrongfully dismissed me. We went to court. Now we are discussing about settlement of the matter out of court because Strathmore discovers they were wrong. I cannot ask the court to ask Strathmore to reinstate me, even if Strathmore knows they were wrong. It is Strathmore who have asked for settlement out of court, not me, because they know they are wrong. So because they know they are wrong, uh, they have asked for settlement out of court. So I can't ask them to reinstate me, even if they know they are wrong, because I knew they were wrong from day one. So the same way to the president, uh, Deputy President Rigadega Chagwa. Uh, he knows very well that... Um, He's out of office, uh, and they look at his statement. He said that now he wants the president to do whatever the president wants with the country, but to leave, it, let him leave, give him peace. So that's the only thing you can ask for. For for example, let's discuss a little bit about the legacy of Rigadi Gachagua. What do you see as somebody who is a Kenyan? What would you remember, Deputy President, for? A lot of people from his olden days as DEO and when he was the first term MP and the, pre the deputy president, people see misery. He instilled a lot of misery on people. Uh, a lot of people are persecuted and they remember persecution. They remember thuggery. Even the people who are being beaten remember the, the Kikuyu uh, council elders and even the Kikuyu committee remembers that he presided over the... Um, the raping of Matiba's wife. Um, people remember that he is a gangster, sort of. And uh, as for now, uh, his star was only rising because he was given the position of the deputy president. And uh, after being ousted from office, you must see maybe he has outlived his political usefulness. And uh, if he does not uh, look at it, he, people might see him as a failure because Someone who rises to the second in command in the country should not just fall up like that. Remember, we can talk about a few people like uh, Musalia Mdavadi. Now he has he moved away from when he left office as vice president. Now he's actually third in command. And people foresee that maybe in the next election he can actually become a running mate. So he might actually be able to go further. Look at people like George Saitoti. He had a career that you can actually look back to and tick a few boxes around it. Um, so Kibaki was a vice president. He became president. Um, so how can you just collapse politically like that, like Gadiga Chagwa, that you come from president and then you just go to your house and private home and that is that's it. So... If Gachagwa is not careful, soon he's going to lose the second thing, which is difficult. He has lost power, which was the basis for him to have the political capital he was enjoying. 
and um, he's also maintaining his economic viability. Now he's going to lose the political capital and then secondly lose his economic power because William Ruto is going to go after Rigathi Gachagua and sabotage him economically. He said William Ruto is vicious. If he knows he's vicious, let him know that that is the next game. Uh, has Rigathi Gachagua acquired what, his wealth fairly? Can he demonstrate them? I hear that he's worth, I don't know, 50 billion shillings or thereabout. Does he run a company that has generated revenue worth that money? So William Ruto can help us finish Gachagua is when we shall now go after William Ruto. But he, William Ruto has helped Kenyans get rid of Gachagua because Gachagua has not been known for anything good. He was a lapdog for William Ruto. He insulted people for William Ruto. Actually, he was the one who was uh, actually appointed by William Ruto to insult people like Raila, Azimio people. He said every word. And if he's not careful, those people whom he was insulting now are with William Ruto. They are going to gang together with William Ruto to help William Ruto bring him down and bring him down properly. Even I had him saying that he told William Ruto not to tax Kenyans. He supported the finance bill. He told MPs to vote for it. He told MPs, if you don't vote for the finance bill, you will not get a road in your constituency. Um, he, he made very serious uh, allegations against opposition when opposition was trying to correct the wrongs in government. He said he was the one appointed actually to put Raila away from the president. And he did do that very well until his collapse is when now Raila is rising within the ranks of the working with William Ruto. I'm not saying I'm supporting Raila. I, I don't really. Um, you saw there was an ins uh, even Raila named him Gacheta, which is really someone who is a shit, according to the, 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 the language Raila was using against him. So I believe that uh, Rigadi Achagwa has really uh, gone down, maybe without knowing, but he is actually down now politically. And the second battle is to make him economically uh, and viable because William Ruto wants to contain him by fighting him economically so that he can forget about the political battle. And uh, if you ask me that the shares, if you are buying shares called Rigadi Achagwa, um, I'm sure you better sell them before they deteriorate very fast because they are not going to appreciate for now. They had been appreciating as was being prosecuted, but remember Kenyans have very short memories. Immediately William Ruto nominates the next deputy president and that one gets sworn in. They'll give their allegiance to that next deputy president and they'll forget about all of you. So Gachaga will be forgotten, mark my words. Now, the biggest hurdle William Ruto has is how will he be able to get Kindiki into office? Because Kindiki has got serious and very clear uh, legal uh, hurdles. One, to be elected as deputy president, you need to have been a member of a political party for at least three months. But for Kindiki to become um, um, a CS, he had to resign from any political party because he becomes a state officer who should not be a member of a political party. So uh, how, how long will it take these three months for him to actually register, become a member of a political party? then the nomination takes place, then eventually now he can be able to be sworn in. Uh, secondly, you remember that it's only IBC that was supposed to actually declare the vacancy in the office of the president. And you can tell very clearly that it is, it is IBC commissioners are not there. William Ruto and Raila decided that there's no IBC for now. They do not want even to think about it. So they have to give us an IBC to be able to declare the, that office vacant. Therefore, the, the speaker can give writs, and therefore we can be able to nominate him. But of course, there will be a lot of challenges. But the beauty of thing that Gachagua brings to us is that if we are able to prove that regarding Gachagua was removed from office illegally or wrongfully or not in concurrence with the Constitution, it gives us more reason to believe that William Ruto needs to go the way we had said in the beginning that Ruto must go. The second thing is it tells us that we do not have any elected representative like parliament and senators. They cannot be able to know the illegalities and the irregularities in the, in the nomination of Gitiki. They cannot see it also in the impeachment of Gachagua. 
and therefore they cannot be the custodian of people's interests. They are not representing people, they are not doing oversight, and actually they are not be able to make laws which are right. Because if you can make impeachment laws which don't work, you make appointments to office laws which don't work, then why should the members of parliament be called lawmakers and the Senate be called lawmakers when they are actually lawbreakers? So for me, it, it, it actually dents the legitimacy of the National Assembly and the Senate and the Office of the President and the Attorney General because the Attorney General is the legal advisor to the President who made these nominations. So for me, this is a very serious uh, uh, condition to put across. If, if, you, if I would be able to give Rigathi Gachagua advice, my advice would be to him, it is now time to think about your family. If there is any wealth you got wrongfully, separate those wealth, return them back to Kenya. Ask for amnesty, give back the wealth you took. Once you give amnesty, go back and live your normal life. Some of us are living on a very little money, and we don't have to live in billions. Cut up, downgrade completely, and realize that it is the end of it, and just live a normal life like we live this normal life. And forget about all your ambitions of trying to say you want to be the kingpin of Mount Kenya. Mount Kenya, if I can tell you guys, Mount Kenya treats together the Gachaga with the sympathy and empathy as one of their sons who is being mistreated. Kenya does not see the leadership in the Gachaga. Because the Gadi Gachaga has violated anything that could make him become the leader of Mount Kenya. He has disobeyed all the leaders who are there. They're his, if you call his elders, Uru Kenyatta is one of them, uh, whom he treated so badly. Uh, he has insulted very many people that work with Uru Kenyatta and disobeyed them. How comes Mount Kenya, after Rigadi Gachagua became deputy president, second in command, never called on him and anointed him as one of the leaders, or if you like, the spokesperson, or the leader of the Mount Kenya community? It simply means that they haven't seen the leadership thing in him. So they love him as their son. Even me, I would love him as my own son. But they cannot crown him. Because Brigadi Gachaga has not made the sacrifices needed uh, to be crowned king. Because some, uh, you cannot be able to, um, to rush for the crown if you cannot be able to suffer for the crown. You, can't, you, don't want, you have to sacrifice for the crown. And he has not sacrificed for Mount Kenya enough to be anointed as the leader of Mount Kenya community. Mount Kenya has got very gifted, very intelligent, very hardworking, very industrious people that can lead them. And Rigadi Gachagua is not one of them. Mount Kenya has not known as thugs. They have not been known as people who can bring misery, prosecution, um, people who are having a lot of ill-gotten. Well, Mount Kenya has been known as people who work hard and get what they want. Therefore, Rigadi Gachagua does not represent them. And Rigadi Gachagua has just been used to bring down William Ruto. And let me tell you why I read the statement of Rigadi Gachagua yesterday, and there's something really wanting. Rigadi Gachagua thinks that the difference between him and William Ruto is because he was defending the people of Kenya. That's not the truth. Rigadi Gachagua was with William Ruto defending everything William Ruto said. And he was with him in the same page. The reason why William Ruto has fallen out with Rigathi Gachagua is not even personal the way people think. The main reason is that Rigathi, William Ruto never liked Rigathi Gachagua even in the beginning. He never liked him. And uh, what he wanted was Mount Kenya votes. He wanted Mount Kenya support base. And he didn't want Rigathi Gachagua. And he knew by putting Rigathi Gachagua as a poster boy to represent Mount Kenya, he would do everything he wanted in Mount Kenya. And he got it. But now he had discovered the mountain has shifted and no longer likes him. Whether he is with Rigathi Gachagua or not, he will never see Mount Kenya. And now he wants to use this thing of isolating Mount Kenya against the rest of Kenyans and shift allegiance, if you like, to Western Kenya, where he will get the lawyer support. Hopefully he he's thinking I can get the lower support, get his support from coast, get
get his support already. He has gotten from from the northeast and through his representatives like the dualers and the rest. Um, get some support from, uh, if you like the 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 Tana River people, isn't it? And then see how we can win the presidency by creating a narrative that is going to be Kikuyus versus the rest of Kenyans. So this Kikuyu versus the rest of Kenyans is Ruto's narrative. So it's not about Gachagwa. It's about Ruto's presidency 2027. Gachagwa needs to know why he's leaving office. If he consumes intelligence, then he should know that he has not been kicked out of office because they hate him, they don't like him. Let him know he has been kicked out because that his community that he represents, the Murima, is no longer viable for William Ruto. And therefore, anybody who represents that so-called community does not. Remember when he began the one shilling, one vote, um, uh, one shilling, one vote, one, one, pa pa one person narrative, William Ruto opposed it. And uh, now even the Murima thing was opposed. It was one of the reasons why he was impeached. So he should know that it's not about him. It's about the community that has been hated by William Ruto. And William Ruto has always hated the community that is called Mount Kenya. Uh, if you want to know that, it shows one, he killed them in Kiamba Church in Naivasha. Um, another reason why he, you can say he hated them, when he was in Pentagon, he created the narrative that it is Kenya versus, versus the rest of Kikuyu. So when he created that narrative within Azimio to support Raila Odinga, but it was self-interest. Uh, he also talked about the issue of Madawadawa. He called the Kikuyus who live in the, in, in the, in the Rift Valley region Madawadawa. So how can this Madawadawa all of a sudden be good? He hates them. Second, thirdly, when he was given a chance to appoint his cabinet, he gave 13 CSS to Mount Kenya. But he didn't pick the best and brightest. Name them. Deputy President Gary Gachagwa is not the best and brightest of Mount Kenya. He gave majority leader to Ichungwa, who is not the best and brightest of Mount Kenya. He gave uh, positions like to people like Moses Korea. He gave positions like people like Linturi. Um, those are not the best and brightest of Mount Kenya. And therefore, it's obvious that he needs one the Mount Kenya people to shine. He hates them. Secondly, th fourthly, he has divided Mount Kenya now. And he has even divided them much further in tribal lines because William Ruto plays a lot of tribal cards. So by dividing the mountain on tribal lines, now we have Mount Kenya West, we have Mount Kenya East. Now I'm hearing that Meru is also being divided between the Meru, the Embu, and the Tharaka. Like now they have denied that, uh, that uh, Kiture Kindiki is not a Meru. Kiture Kindiki is from Taraka. And Tharakas are never Merus. You see all those tribal divisions of dividing Kenyans into tribal cocoons, which is what we hate as Gen Z's, because we say we are tribalists. So all those things Ruto is doing is all about hating of Mount Kenya by dividing them. While he wants to unite the Luya people, he wants to unite the Luo people, he wants to unite the Kales, he wants to unite the coastal people. Why is Ruto dividing Mount Kenya while uniting other parts of the country? When he talks about his Maraka speech that we need to be treated equally, we need to become like a, uh, one family, and he's dividing Mount Kenya, those are lies that we know him of. So this is the main thing, and I want to tell Mount Kenya people, the best thing you can do is to rise up, unite yourself, don't wait for you to divide, you unite yourselves. Unite yourself, and then unite with the whole Kenyans. And if you like, uh, not to ensure that you play into Ruto's uh, playbook, if you can get a leader outside Mount Kenya that you can work with, that can become the presidential candidate, that has support from another region, and that you can be able to give that person the vote to the last man to prove to Ruto that you are not as tribal as he thinks, then that one you are going to be Ruto's narrative. But if you put your own in the ballot, you will confirm to Ruto that you're also thinking that you're supremo and you believe that only you people can rule Kenya. But should you be able to find a, a viable candidate also that can also be able to support and get support across the country, that people can go and support that leader across the country, and that percentage of votes that he will get will come outside Mount Kenya significantly to win the election. That is another strategy to surprise William Ruto. Whether this is possible or not, we can only wait and see as time goes by. Thank you.
about that they, they keep cooing and uh, it's already said it in the clip oh we just said mm. oh no i'm saying that uh, Rigathi Gachagwa needs to understand clearly the script is not that uh, Uhuru, that Ruto hates him personally. Because what are they fighting over? A man and a woman fights over anything personally. Either you fight over a woman, or you fight over money, or you fight over power. There is no woman they are fighting between him and Gachagwa. The money... William Ruto has successfully stopped him from making money the way he could have made money in this Kenya Kwanzaa administration. And power, it is the, it is, it is the reason why he was a, vice, a deputy president who has no political party of his own, who has no MPs that he can call a, a parliamentary group meeting for, and William Ruto already outmaneuvered him on that. So the main fight now is Mount Kenya should be excluded from Ruto's conversation. Even if there are some, so many Mount Kenya people in Ruto's government, they are just there as poster boys. But they are not there as the real players. So because William Ruto has used Mount Kenya to be, to be where he is, he knows that in 2027 or in the next election, he doesn't need Mount Kenya to go where he wants. And he knows that if he gets Raila Odinga on his side, he gets Musalem David on his side, um, he gets people like Joho on his side and he coalesces this together and create a narrative that it is Kikuyus who are the problem in Kenya and put this thing that it is between the Kikuyus and the rest of Kenyans, then easily that narrative can sell so that 2027 election or the next election is not about what matters. It's not an economic discussion because he has performed dismally in economics. It won't be about uniting. It won't be about advancing Kenyan's agenda. It will be about tribal, because if the tribal card is the discussion in the run-up run to 2027, Ruto wins. But if you bring economics, Ruto goes down. I said it earlier. The only missile that can succeed against William Ruto is economic missile. If we come up with an economic compelling agenda, that can prove to William Ruto that we have a better economic solution than the tribal arithmetic is doing will be doomed. And that's why I'm warning Kenyans, don't buy the tribal card. We are not 42 tribes the way they say. Neither are we two tribes rich and poor. The tribes we have in Kenya, ni wenye wana tuibia, na wenye wana ibiwa. And I'm saying wenye wana ibiwa, Wakuje pamoja, waweke hawa wote, Rigathi Gachagwa, Uruto, Raila, all those people who are in Antibia, all those politicians, put them together. Waweke kwa farasi moja. Na yo farasi iwe ya wezi, wenye wanatuibia, waende nyumbani. Alafu sisi tuunde ile farasi ingine ya pili, wenye ambao wamechoka kuibiwa. Na hiyo wenye wamechoka kuibiwa, waunde serikali ambayo ni lean, and clean, lean and clean, not broad-based government, not fraud-based government, not bread-based government. Wale ambao ni lean and clean government. Kwa sabu tumechoka kuibiwa. Then we create the narrative, the way I'm trying to say, it's between us and them. Them, when you wame tuibia, when you wame tuwa, when you watushika ovio ovio, when you wame suppress, when you wame tudanganya, Wameiba Dania, wameiba airport. Wana, wana, wameiba safari kwa mwamaliza. Wasai wanangusha KCB. They want to steal all Kenyan assets. Wenye wanatuibia waende kwa farasi moja na hiyo farasi ende nyumbani. Na wenye wanaibia waonde serikali amba itakuwa lean and clean. When the government system is clean, services to citizens inapatikana. Elimu itakuwa bore. Uh, afya itakuwa bure na umaskini ita, itaisha na sisi tutakuwa tajiri sote na tutoka kwa hii mambo ya timaskini wanapiga magoti eh, chini wakiomba tajiri ambaye amewaibia ati unisaidie wanakuja kwa kanisa wakisha iba wanapiga magoti unaomba mnisusaidie kwa, kwa rambe wanafanya hivyo hivyo 
mtu akikufa kwa hivyo mbona mtu asiwe na uwezo ya kuzika mwenzake mama yake baba yake mwenyewe bila kuomba na kutengeneza whatsapp group hii ni kwa sababu uwizi ni mingi na pesa uwizi ndio unaendeza serikali ndio maana mimi sitaki hiyo narrative ya kusikia TSG Murima nini zii kabila hii kabila ile hiyo wana sasa ndio wanaleta mimi nimefanya kazi kama professor Stathmo wanafunzi wangu walikuwa kutoka kwa kabila zote na tulipendana kama mtoto na, na, na wanafunzi wake mwalimu na wanafunzi wake tulipendana kama ndugu na dada ukabila hakuwa ukabila ni ya watu wa siasa na iende alafu nataka kuomba corporate eh, corporate world najua vile nilikuwa professor mlikuwa na mimi sana lakini sasa nikiongea mnaona na kama mimi kichwa yangu imeruka si kichwa hajaruka i am still professor fredo gola you knew the only problem i have is that i'm seeing that our country is being ruined why don't you come and join me and support me in what i'm doing in transforming this country kwa sababu It is stated that when good people don't join politics bad people will and in Kenya they have and the fact that you are a politician you are a corporate leader you believe you are not interested in politics politics will not fail to be interested in you politics actually is interested in you I know now uh, the corporate world I used to do training for you I used to do a lot of work for you I used to collaborate a lot with you doing corporate governance training strategic planning and the rest now people see me as a politician who cannot do those work those work I still do that's how I earn my money uh, and I'm not asking you to donate money to me I'm just asking you I could still continue giving you value in those areas as I still continue telling the government on areas which they are wrong and they should may, there will be separation if you go to the US Elon Musk is blasting Kamala Harris and Joe Biden and he's running a company that works for them and both of them are on Twitter. Kamala Harris is on Twitter, Joe Biden is on Twitter, Obama is on Twitter, Trump is on Twitter and there's no problem. Why is it in Kenya if you are a leader, if you say something against the government, then even the corporate run away from you. And let me tell you corporate world, this is hypocrisy you are putting across. I'm now fighting how William Ruto wants to finish Safaricom. How he is finishing KCB? Where will your children and children's children work if Safaricom goes down? Where will your children and children's children work if KCB goes down? Where will your children and your children and children work when National Bank goes down? And they are using all these banks and telcos as conduit to do the business they are doing with Adani. An example being Shif, Safaricom is putting up a consortium taking shareholders money 104 billion shillings to run the shift that platform just needs barely 2 billion shillings kibaki launched the nhif platform portal with around around 1 billion ruto is putting uh, safaricom to do it for 104 billion now safaricom shares are moved from 42 45 shillings a share to 12 15 shillings a share and you are just watching thinking fred ogola is wrong i'm asking you as i'm wrong ask me answer me this question where is your children and your children children going to work if these corporates go down in a deal with ruto's companies done by adil kawaja who is his lawyer the chairman of safaricom are you not seeing how the kenyan corporates are being infiltrated to be killed so that they are owned through ruto's hand over dani Where will they work when the JKIA is taken over? Kisumu International Airport is taken over. Eldoret Airport is taken over. Mombasa Airport is gone. The one in Bungoma, the one in Kakamega, all them gone. Where will they work? Tell me. The one in Isiolo. When all the airports are gone, run by foreigners, you think foreigners will prefer you for jobs. They'll give you bad working conditions. I'm trying to tell you that's why I'm asking you we are supposed to also interest on how our economy is being run on corporate governance as a governance expert i will always fight for you whether you listen to me or not that's up to you but uh, what i'm asking you is that we need support from you because i can tell you the balance sheet you run that balance sheet will have a problem it will turn to a balance sheet you will see sheet in the balance sheet then you wake up and realize that what fredo gola was saying 
has nothing to do with hating William Ruto. It has nothing to do with hating anybody in government. It is all about for the future of this country, our children and our children's children. And that's why I'm trying to tell you, join me in fighting for the formation of a lean and clean government. A government that elects one of us, those who know our problems, not one of them, those who steal and create for us problems. Thank you. So if Gachaga wants to know that things have gone thick, let him listen to what happened to Sonko. Sonko had a lot of political capital. He still does have a lot of political capital. But Sonko was castrated when he was impeached and removed from the office of the governor. The same thing happened to Babayao. Babayao was also impeached and later was removed from the office of the governor of Kiambu. They have political capital, yes, but where will they go? The same character, attributes that Sonko has, corruption, thuggery, those things I call them prosecution, tyranny, all these characters, they look the same. If you look at Chagua, you look at uh, Sonko, you look at Babayao, they fall in the same WhatsApp group. Aruto knows that. So Ruto will e take them to extinction. They cannot stand for any political office, and now economically they are being pursued. So Gachago will go to court severally over those cases he was seeing in, the, in, the, in, in, in Parliament, those cases of impeachment about fraud, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and corruption. So if he's not careful, it will work very hard. So let him just come down, accept his status, ensure that he just uh, takes away all the money. If I'm him, I'll ask, for, I'll ask his lawyers to apply for uh, amnesty so that he can be cleared, at least live a normal life. Thank you.